Well, hello and welcome to this latest video. This is a series on converting from Windows operating system to the Linux operating system. And it's a step-by-step -step series taking you through what you need to do. The reason for this series is because Microsoft is stopping support for Windows 7. And if, like me, you don't like Windows 10, I've tried it, and I find it much too um, intrusive into your privacy, or Windows 8, then you might want to use uh, a different operating system, and Linux Mint is a very good candidate for that. What steps do you need to take? Well, there are a number of things that you need to, be to do before you start, and the first is to make backups. Now, this is the most important step, because you are going to be deleting your Windows operating system and you are going to be deleting everything on your Windows drive so you have to make backups now you need to copy your data not the programs just the data to an external recommended USB drive you can if you wish do it to a NAS a, a network attached storage device or you can do it to something like uh, Dropbox or whatever. If you do it to Dropbox it might take you a very 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 long time depending on how much you've got stored in Dropbox already. You need to back up your documents folder, your pictures folder, your videos folder, your music folder. If you are not using Gmail or an online email service like uh, Gmail or Live or Hotmail then you'll need to back up your email if you're using for example Outlook Express or you're using Thunderbird or something like that. You need to back up any of your document templates that you might use in Office or other programs and you might need to do data in other locations so for example if you produce uh, things for the web you might have programs, you might have HTML and that type of thing in htdocs, you might have items in downloads, you might have things in your temp folder, you'll have browser bookmarks and this type of thing. You need to go and, and check all your locations where you normally store things and then back up the data in there. I wouldn't clean your data at this point because if for some reason you desi decide to put Windows back on again then you can just put everything back on from the backup once you've installed your programs. If you decide not to put Windows back on then you can clean your data later. Use copy and paste to copy the folders. Do not use backup software as Linux cannot read it and you must not under any circumstances do paste shortcut. Do not paste a shortcut. You will lose your data. You must paste the complete file. Now if like me you have about 1.5 terabytes of data. When I did my backup it took about 8 hours to back everything up. Um, so be aware that it depends on how much data you have on your system as to how long it's going to take. Okay, and finally, when you've done your backups, double check. Go all the way through all the folders on your system and check that you have backed up all the data and that you can read it. So you double click or you just select random files from your USB drive and open it. If possible, connect your USB drive to another computer, a different computer, and then see if you can open the data on that. You must not, under any circumstances, use paste shortcut. You will lose data if you do that. Okay, step two. Step two, passwords. You're going to have passwords in a number of different places and you need to make sure that you've got copies of your usernames and your passwords. So you must make a note of all your passwords. I know you're not supposed to write them down and this type of thing, but if you if you are like me and you've got a lot of passwords then you have to have a system of storing your passwords I tend to use LastPass but you can use anything you like um, but I also have passwords which I don't store in LastPass for example my banking and financial passwords are not stored in LastPass they're stored in my head 
Okay, you might have some passwords and usernames stored in your internet browser. If there is, then you need to export. Now there's usually an export function in the settings menu and export your password, your username and passwords to your external USB drive. Do not do it to the internal drive in your computer or if you do make sure it's copied over to the USB drive. You might have other passwords stored on your computer for example if you have an FTP client then you might have passwords in there if you have database servers you may have passwords in there you may have passwords in other programs that you might use so make sure that you've copied or made a note of all your passwords okay you must make sure all your passwords are in a safe place you must make sure that they can't be read by other people be careful about that so a good thing is not to put them on Dropbox or anything like that because quite simply if somebody can get into your Dropbox account they can access all your passwords now if you do have any databases if you are a programmer of any sort then you need to back up the data in your databases now the best way to do that is export the database tables indexes uh, the usernames, all the records, everything okay, to SQL files and store them on your external USB drive. Okay, If you're using something like PHP MyAdmin, there's an export function for each database. Use the custom settings and then make sure that you've exported everything that you've got create and, and drop tables and this type of thing. So use the custom settings, make sure you're exporting everything. Right, step three, your browser. Now we, we touched on browsers before, but this is again, make sure you've done your usernames and passwords. Make sure you've got a list of your bookmarks, okay, because you want your browser to be as it was before. If you're using any extensions like LastPass or, or Privacy Badger or Add block plus that type of thing make a note of which ones that you have okay it, you might have special home pages you might have more than one so make note of their URLs okay if you have any special browser settings for example colors fonts font sizes cookies privacy settings this type of thing make a note of what they are the, most browsers have a sync option and if they have I would recommend that you use the synchronize option and synchronize everything including passwords once you've synced back to your new version then you can delete if necessary the sync system okay where possible store all this information on your external USB drive so it's all in one place do not store it on your computer because you are going to delete everything on your computer. Right, step four. You have various programs on your computer and it would be nice to have those programs back with Linux. So you need to make a note of all the programs you use and what I did was I made a note of ones which were only available in Windows and programs which had both Linux and Windows and then I also made a note of those which were only available in Windows but for which Linux has a replacement suitable replacement program so for example you check to see if there is a Linux version that is not a Linux version of Microsoft Office so you need to install LibreOffice or OpenOffice now they do virtually the same as Microsoft Office there is a, a small learning curve but they are basically the same if you've got something like Photoshop for example GIMP will do most of what Photoshop will do it won't do everything but it will certainly do most of uh, what people use okay check the various program websites to see if there is a, a Linux you we are going to be using Ubuntu or a Debian version so for example Dropbox has versions for Linux um, so do various other online storage um, system VLC has Linux versions if you are a programmer you might be using NetBeans or Atom or Sublime Text or VS Codes they all have Linux versions 
So check to see if there is a Linux version of your programs and if there is then you're okay, you can mark that down. If there isn't, see if there's a suitable replacement, for example, like G GIMP. Okay. Now, you need to m make a note of, of or export the settings for each program as required. Now, if you, for example, got NetBeans, you can export your settings from NetBeans. That's quite easy. You can do, you know, that for a lot of different programs. But remember when you import them that the paths are going to be different because in Linux we, we don't use drive letters. So you will when you re-import them into, I into the program in Linux you'll have to go through and check that the drives let the paths are correct for Linux. Right, step five, drivers. Now this is quite important. Y if you go into control panel system and uh, have a look at uh, the the drivers sorry all the hardware that's on your computer okay you need to make a note of the hardware on your computer because although linux is exceptionally good at identifying most hardware sometimes it will put uh, a default hardware driver on when it's better to have the actual hardware driver now, for example, one of the good things to do is check your display size, so you've got uh, the monitor is the same size. Now, the other thing is make sure you have the make and model of your video card. This is actually very important. Again, you can get this from Windows, from the system information in Windows, because when Linux comes in, it'll usually put a default video driver on, and then you can actually create you can actually put on the correct driver it will usually have mm, the option to do this in drivers the same for Wi-Fi network cards and Bluetooth make sure that you have the makes and models and once they're on make sure you can actually install the the actual version if there is one excuse me if there there isn't then the default works fine on this computer that I'm talking to you at the moment my Wi-Fi network card Bluetooth are all the Linux defaults the video card is not it's actually the Nvidia that I've installed printer make and model make sure you have that there are Linux drivers for most printers if you go onto the website if not you'll find that actually that there are some uh, in the cups printer system which we'll come to once we've installed Linux Okay, you might have other specialized hardware and or software on your system. Everybody's system is different. If you do, make sure that you have information pertaining to that. So the make, the model, this type of thing, so that you can actually uh, put it back onto your system and set it up properly. Okay, finally, double check everything this is exceptionally important you must double check absolutely everything okay make sure that you've got all your files backed up make sure that you know your drivers make sure you've got your passwords your usernames go through and check everything okay because you are going to delete your complete system and therefore you need to make sure that you have everything there Right, so in summary, did I mention that you need to double check everything? You need to double check everything, so go and do it now. Very important. Okay, in the next video, we're actually going to install Linux Mint. Now, my computer has two drives in it. I have um, an SSD, which I'm using for the operating system, and then I've got an old HDD, well it's not an old one, it's actually a new one, but a, a 2 terabyte HDD which I'm using for data, and I've partitioned that. So I'll be showing you how to do that. Now, I did actually video the screen of uh, with a video camera of me doing this setup, but it didn't come out very well. I will actually show you part of that video in the installing Linux Mint one. So what I'm going to do is I, I've set up a virtual machine and I've set it up with two drives and I'm going to show you how to do it on that. Now if you've only got one drive I'll also show you how to do that as well. Okay, so that's everything there. 
Now, please like, share and subscribe to receive notifications about new videos. It also helps this channel so that we can actually make new videos. We've made about a hundred and something videos so far and it does take time and effort to make the videos and if you subscribe it does does help the channel a little bit. So thank you for watching and the next video which will be installing Linux Mint will be available very shortly.